Hello, I'm Nancy Maddox with WYTV7, the Christian Broadcasting Network in Charlotte, and my show is Shine Your Light Radio Ministry, and you have no idea how excited I am today. We have some very special guests, and all I can say is get ready because we have a beautiful testimony from a mother and a son team, Miss Julie Kemp and her son Landon. And um, the name of her book is Faith Has Its Reasons. So when you hear the title of that book, you know this is going to be exciting. Uh, Miss Julie um, is in North Carolina and lives in Waxhaw. And uh, due to her struggles and long grief journey, which you'll hear about a little more, she finds peace in helping others as a grief facilitator. And her son, her miracle son, Landon, who's with us, survived many obstacles in order to share their story about heaven and Jesus. And uh, if you've endured uh, a catastrophic loss or questioned God in any way, this book and this interview will show you how to per persevere and find happiness again. I'm just so excited. And again, the name of the book is Faith Has Its Reasons. And we're on WYTV, Christian Broadcasting Network in Charlotte. And I'm in Little Rock, Arkansas. And we have Julie, Julie Kemp and her son, Landon. So if it's okay, guys, I'm just going to start running with these questions because we have a lot to cover today. And I'm so excited. Uh, Miss Julie, uh, can you explain what happened the day your life was forever changed? Yes, yeah, so we were on our way home from church. It was a typical Sunday morning, and um, we were T-boned at an intersection by an ambulance. The ambulance was not on call. There were no flashing lights or sirens or anything, and um, at the intersection is... Um, my husband was driving, I was a passenger in the car, and my son was in the back seat behind his dad. And um, they were working on my husband, and they were getting me out of the car. And one of the workers saw a kid's shoe. And when they found the kid's shoe is when they deepened their search for the match and body. And they had to go through the trunk of our car to pull Landon out of the back uh, of the trunk. And when they pulled him out of the back of the trunk, he was not breathing. Worst nightmare. I guess that's a mother's worst nightmare. It sure would have been mine. What an experience. How did your son Landon share his experience? Well, you know what? I'm gonna skip that question because these are kind of like not in order. Um, but I want to talk a little bit more about, um, with Landon, about exactly what happened, what happened with him. Uh, Landon, um, sweetheart, you died three times. Can you kind of tell us a little bit about how, what happened when, you're di when you died and your experience with Jesus and God? Um, I remember being able to see my dad, who had just passed away, um, from the collision of the accident. Uh, he, his friend who had died less than a month ago in a car accident, and his uh, friend's son who had passed away a couple of years before on a four-wheeler accident. Um, I remember being all circled around with them, not saying anything, but just being able to see their physical bodies. And um, I remember seeing angels dancing and singing and everything, and I always like to compare it to the movie Sister Act with Whoopi Goldberg. Um, now, that's no comparison to heaven, but I try to um, put it on people terms as good as I can. Um, and I remember being able to see my mom's first two miscarriages. I don't remember them saying anything to me or me saying anything to them, but I remember being able to see them and it was a boy and a girl and they had looked like they were right at the preteen age and um i remember being able to see jesus and having him 
come to me and tell me to go back to earth and be a good Christian and tell others about him. Eight years old when this happened, Landon? Yes, ma'am. Wow. And how old are you now, Landon? 28. Wow. Such an awesome story of, of just God's, God's wonder. My goodness. Um, Miss Julie, uh, how did, uh, how did Landon share the experiences in heaven with you? He, um, he, he died the first time at the scene, and then the second time when he died, we were both being airlifted to Carolina's Medical Center. And then the third time um, he died was at Carolina's Medical Center, and they were working hard, you know, to, to bring him back. And so after that, he was in a coma, and he had um, to have surgery from all the swelling and everything on the brain. After he woke up from his coma, they um, sent us to rehab. And so he had a lot of therapists in the room all day long working with him. And um, right before one of the, um, the therapists came, he just leaned over to me and he's like, oh, mom, by the way, I forgot to tell you, I saw your other two kids. And um, so I never knew what they were until he, he told me, that one was a boy and one was a girl. And so um, that's how it began. Wow. Oh, I'm telling you, this this is just one fantastic interview, and I'm so excited. Um, Miss Julie, what was your relationship with God during that time? Um, like we were on our way home from church, and we were, you know, we had a great relationship. You know, we were um, Sunday school teachers, and my husband was in the evangelism explosion program at the church. Landon attended the Christian school, and so we thought that we were doing everything right. You know, we were trying to, you know, we were a young family. I, I was 31 at the time, and um, so we were trying to do everything right. And I had just finished reading a book by Billy Graham, all about angels and, you know, how God used the angels in the Old Testament and how he used them in the New Testament and, um, and how he uses them today. And I didn't understand why God didn't send angels to us. And so I was very, you know, frustrated and hurt that we didn't, um, have angels. And so when, um, I was in the hospital. I had surgeries myself. I had to check myself out so that I could attend my husband's funeral. And while they, they had to wheel me, I was in a wheelchair and they had to wheel me to the front of the church. And while I was down there, I could hear the preacher talking, but I was just fussing at God. I was like, where were you? And you know, why didn't we deserve an angel? And so I was very mad at God feeling like that. He had abandoned us. And, um, and then at the very same time, my very next breath, I was praying as hard as I could that Landon would live because at the time they were not giving me much hope that he was going to live. And so it was a very, um, a very, very hard time and hard relationship that I had understanding why God would allow this to happen to us. Oh my, we've all felt forsaken by God and Jesus at some time in our life, but yours really uh, is such a story of profound, <laughs> just so profound and so interesting. And it just really lets us understand that uh, faith has its reasons. If you're just joining us in this exciting interview with Miss Julie Kemp and her son, her miracle son Landon, on WYTV7, hold on because we have a lot more questions that we're going to be asking, and this is just so fascinating and so beautiful, such a beautiful story. Uh, you did have an angel come in your life, Miss Julie, right? You got remarried. I did get remarried, yes, and um, and I also had another son, so I have two boys now. Uh, when you when you um, how did you handle um, after you remarried and uh, had a blended family? How how did you handle that? 
It was very hard. I um, suffered from survivor's guilt because I um, lived in the accident. And then I also suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder. And so um, even though, you know, I, you know, God did send somebody else to love me, it was hard for me to accept it, you know, because I felt guilty that I could go on and guilty that I found love again. And so, um, so that was challenging for me to work through. And then also um, for anybody who struggles with the Glendon family, it's not easy. And, you know, Landon's loyalty and love and um, everything was to his dad. And so he felt like if he accepted his stepdad that he wasn't showing his loyalty to his dad. And so he had some issues um, with it too. Well, I guess so. And he was only eight. Uh, how old were you Landon, when your mom remarried? 10. I'm 11. Two years later. Well, God sent, sent y'all both an angel and someone to love you, and then you had another child. But still, that's difficult for a 10-year-old son who's lost his uh, father. Uh, Landon, how have you dealt with the loss of your dad And uh, since you were only eight years old when he died? Mm, it, it was most definitely hard at the beginning, harder, um, because my dad was – my best friend, he was always my baseball coach, football coach, uh, everything. He was always the first one to the field and the last one to leave. Um, and so when it had at first happened, I didn't understand it because of the fact that I died three times and me being brought up playing baseball, um, it kind of made me feel like I had my three strikes and I was out. And so it just, it hurt, but after quite a while, I just had to wake up and realize that God's got his reasons for everything that he does. And there's um, no way around what God has in store for you. That is absolutely right. And you know, um, I lost a very good friend to cancer about 12 or 13 years ago. We'd been with friends for like 40 years. And we always had a saying that, that God always spoke to us. And when he spoke to us, it would like shiver our timbers. And we'd go, wow, did we just hear that? And um, when she died of cancer, I, I carried a lot of grief and a lot of very much sadness. I got angry with God because he took her away from me so soon. And I didn't know how I could survive, but I hear her all the time now. God speaks to me through her, and I hear her all the time. So it's very exciting, that part, although once you get over the grief and you can still function and God, God finally brings you back down, then, um, then it, it, it seems to be wonderful. Uh, Landon, uh, Jesus sent you back to tell others about, about him. How do you go about that, Landon? Um, well, Dawn, just what we're doing right now, um, I've spoken to my mom's grief share facility. I speak about once or twice a year. Um, um, I've spoken to churches, um, small gatherings, big gatherings. Um, just whenever the opportunity comes knocking, I always try to do my best. Well, thank you, and I'm so I'm so happy that I'm getting to interview y'all. I'm learning so much about faith, and the book is uh, simply uh, magnificent. And again, we're on WYTV7 in the Christian Broadcasting Network in Charlotte, and I'm in Little Rock, and we have Julie Kemp and her son Landon, and the name of the book is Faith Has Its Reasons. So, um, Miss Julie, um, what did Jesus tell Landon to do the third time he went to heaven? Um, the third time Landon went to heaven, um, it was the longest time. The doctors had to work really hard to bring him back. And um, Jesus told Landon that he had to go back to earth. He had to be a good Christian, and he had to tell others about him. Landon didn't want to, and he, um, he knew that he wanted to stay in heaven. And so we had a really hard time with Landon. Um, expressing his anger and his frustration because 
you know, he would get mad at me and he would get mad at other people when they would tell him, we prayed for you. Um, we're so glad you're here because he didn't want to be here. He wanted to still be in heaven. And so he had a hard time um, hitting people and swinging. He didn't know how to express his frustration or his anger. And so we had to buy him a punching bag until he could get some of that out and, and not hit his friends. He loved his friends. He loved for them to come over, but he was just struggling because he so desperately wanted to stay in heaven. Wow. And he's so young. I mean, you know, it, it's just, it's amazing that he's such a stable uh, young man now and it's all because of his faith. Mm -hmm. So it's very exciting. Uh, so you, you actually had a punching bag, uh, Landon, mm -hmm. that you could take your anger out with, right? I had two punching bags. <laughs> That's fantastic, you know, and, and God wants us to release our anger. Uh, he, he wants us to have an outlet to do that, and uh, he helps us through that. So that's fantastic. Uh, Miss Julie, uh, who was your support system during this journey? My support group was my friends and my family. Because of my, um, my grief journey, and my frustration and my questions and my disappointments and everything, you know, with God, I was not going to church. And I was scared to go back to ch church because the last time I went to church, you know, my life forever changed in a horrific way. And so I was scared to go back to church and I was mad at God, but my friends were praying and for me and with me and around me and just you know they were they were stepping up and, and um, loving me even when I was I'm sure being difficult and, and stubborn and um, so they were my angels that that got me through it when um, when you know we were going through that there wasn't a grief share support for me that you know I wasn't aware of anything and um, I don't know why it was just I was focusing all of my attention on getting Landon help, you know, with his injuries. And so I just buried my grief longer. And, um, and so that's why I'm a grief share facilitator today, because I want to, to help others on their grief journey. Um, because I know how hard it is when you keep all that buried inside of you. Oh, yes, ma'am. Absolutely. So how has God used you in your ministry as a grief uh, share facilitator is Julie. I've been a grief share facilitator since 2008 and we have two sessions a year that run for 13 weeks and it is it's just a, um, a common bond that I have with each participant that comes in it's like when they walk through the doors and they can't find the words for their broken hearts and they can't find the words to explain. It's like, I understand what they don't know how to say. And so, you know, I, I know what their tears mean and I know how bad their tears hurt. And so um, it has just been, you know, an opportunity to help walk these people through their mornings when they can find joy again. And um, I've, I've seen people come in crushed and broken. And then a couple years later, I'm sitting at their weddings when they've been able to find love again and remarry. And so, um, so it's just amazing to see them find joy again after, after such a grief journey. Wow. You two are such angels. Oh my goodness. You're such angels to so many people. Uh, what's your relationship with God like now, Miss Julie? Well, now I know, like I didn't, you know, I was questioning God, like, why didn't you send, you know, angels to us? And, and, you know, now that um, it's been years, you know, since I've gotten through that, I know that he sent angels because I've got Landon here with me. And um, so it wasn't the way, it wasn't my plan, it, you know, it wasn't my plan. And so that's why I had such a hard time understanding, but I have my son here. So I know that we had angels there. Absolutely. I know you had angels all along. You just didn't realize that you were grieving me so much and right. had so much happen. Uh, but, you know, God doesn't, God doesn't forsake us, but in our mind, we think he does. So it's, it's just really, uh, just really a fantastic story. I want to switch gears a little bit and talk about the book, if we can. Uh, Faith has its reasons. Uh, so, Mr. 
Julie, can you elaborate a little bit about how you felt when you were writing the book and how you were doing this? I know when I wrote my book about my 25-year career at a credit union, it was a lot of therapy for me. You know, it took me four months to write it, and then I turned around, and I'm like, I cried a lot, I laughed a lot, I had a lot of memories, but it was really therapy. Mm -hmm. It got me over having to retire and leave my job that I worked at for 25 years. So, mm -hmm. and yours is even, even so much more fantastic than that. So, can you explain a little bit more about the book, how the book's doing? Is there a possibility it'll turn into a movie, which is would be really popular right now, and that kind of thing? Uh -huh. Well, um, I did not want to write the book. I did not. I, I, um, I argued with God and I told him all the reasons why he picked the wrong person. I'm not a writer. And I was very private during our grief journey and I didn't want to put it all out there. And I had to deal with all those emotions. And um, so I just, um, I struggled for a long time and I had no peace. Um, and I was on my way home one Saturday morning from the YMCA and I passed a seminary and outside the seminary there was a marquee and on that marquee it said faith has its reasons and so it just spoke to my heart I knew that I had to do it that I was not going to have any peace until I did it and so I, um, I stopped arguing with God and I didn't know what I was going to do and how I was going to do it. But um, I went home and those were the first words I typed when I sat at my computer was faith has its reasons, not knowing what the reason was going to be, but just to start sharing our journey. Wow. Oh, goodness. Um, that's just, that's just so profound. Um, I want to tie a little bit back in uh, to, um, uh, to Easter, since we have Easter coming up in a few weeks, and of course, uh, you know, our Jesus and our Lord um, arose and, um, and, and did so many wonderful things. So, um, as we know, when Jesus was hanging uh, on the cross, he cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So can you tell me a little bit, Miss Julie, about how you felt, how God had forsaken you, and what was your biggest why question? That was my biggest why question was like, why Andy? Like, why my husband? And why, why Landon? Why that intersection? Why that day? You know, it's like there were so many things that I just couldn't understand why. And um, because I wasn't getting my answers to my whys, I was stuck in grief. I was just spinning my wheels because I, I was looking for signs. I was looking for neon signs as to why this happened to us. And I wasn't getting them, you know, um, I, I wasn't seeing my why questions. And um, I just had to, you know, come to the realization that, you know, it, I might not get my answers until I'm in heaven one day and just had to trust God. But I did struggle with that one word, that one question for many, many years. Yeah, I bet. I just can't imagine you did. Huh? Um, Landon, on the third day, Jesus rose from the dead. You died three times. Do you recall the feeling when you woke up and were you at peace? Um, when I came back to earth, came back, yeah. Um, I guess it would be when you came back to earth, yeah. Um, no, ma'am, I don't remember the feeling of coming back. Um, I just remember while being in heaven, um, I always try to compare it to like a movie preview just because I feel like there's only very, very, very small parts of heaven that I was actually able to see and witness. Um, but as far as the feeling of coming back, I guess whenever all of my senses came to me, it was um, much like my mom had said, a lot of disappointment um, and anger because of the fact that I had lost my dad. Um, like I said, growing up playing baseball, I felt like I had my three strikes and I was out. And um, I, I guess uh, just a lot of anger um, because of the small parts of it that I was able to see and not being able to continue to stay there. Okay, Landon, I can, I can uh, 
it's just uh, uh, unbelievable, really. And it so ties into the season that we're in with Jesus, um, you know, being nailed to the cross and plus uh, rising after three days. Uh, Landon, one more question. This might be a difficult one for you. Um, what did Jesus look like to you? He looked like <clears throat> um, he had long brown hair with uh, a beard and uh, a white robe. Um, I, um, I've heard um, since the accident that Jesus would look the way that you could image him here on earth. That way, when you do see him, you'll know what you're looking at or know who you're looking at. Um, now, granted, I don't know how true or untrue that is, but um, he, uh, like I said, uh, long brown beard and long brown hair, and I remember seeing him in a white uh, shining robe. Well, I, I have an ulterior, ulterior motive for asking that. We are on Shine Your Light Radio Ministry. And the reason that I that God gave Shine Your Light to me was because I want to help other people shine their light. And from a child, I always sing in church, uh, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. And for some reason, it just kept coming back to me. So as I got older and I retired, didn't have anything to do, God's nagging me to do something. So I'm like, shine your light. That's what I can do. I can help you all shine your light. So I really, uh, I'm, I'm happy that you said he, you had a, he had on a shiny white robe because I always envision um, Jesus looking like a light, you know, like like far off light and just light emanating from, from him and all. So I really really appreciate that. We don't have very much time left, but I do want, uh, Miss Julie, for you to tell us how we can reach you and how we can best do anything that can get your word out and help you with your book sales and things like that. And uh, so can you give us some contact information at all? Oh, thank you so much. Um, it's just, uh, I'm touched that you even asked that because um, the publishing company that we went with with our book has shut down. They closed a few months ago. And so I don't know where we're going to go from here. You know, I don't know if we need to find an agent or a publishing company or self publish. I really don't know how we're going to get, you know, get the story back out there. And so thank you for asking. I do have a, um, a Facebook page. Faith has its reasons. And so we can be contacted through that. And I'm open to any suggestions and everyone's prayers on, on what we should do from here. Yes, ma'am. We all know that prayers, uh, prayers are the answer. And we just need to pray really hard. I'll be praying for both of y'all. Uh, and also, I wanted to share with you that I, um, I worked for a publishing company for three years. And about eight months ago, I went out on my own and started doing uh, Shine Your Light marketing, booking agent, and things like that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, talk to you privately about that when we get off of the air, Miss Julie. Uh, I do. Wasn't it Tate Publishing that did your book? And I did hear that Tate Publishing was going out of business. Uh, Tate Publishing did my boss at the publishing company's first book too. And it really saddens me. But I do have a lot of contacts with publishing companies. And um, I, I, I can help you with that tremendously. So I think God intervenes in everyone that I meet and anybody that's put in my path. God wants me to help them do things. So I'll get in touch with you about that. But the best way to reach you is uh, through Facebook and faith has its reasons, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. And I appreciate, I appreciate y'all so much. I'm just so excited. This will be published and broadcasted on YouTube. And you'll find that that Miss um, Libby, the executive producer at WYTV, mm -hmm. is uh, going to advertise it a lot, and so am I. And I don't advertise just on Facebook. I advertise on all social media. And uh, I'm really going to work really hard to try to help you uh, find someone to continue this book. You probably need more copies, and we need to pump the sales up. And I honestly believe it could be a movie. And I know y'all don't like to talk about that because you're so humble, but people need to hear this. 
people need to hear that the, that, that the image of God, the image of Jesus, and, and everything that Landon, Landon has done. So oh, I okay. thank you. I thank you so, so much. You don't know how much I appreciate you, well, and Landon, especially you, because you're busy to tie down, and you gave us you gave us thirty or forty minutes of your time. And I appreciate that so much. So um, anyway, we were finished with this interview, and uh, Miss uh, Julie, you'll see you'll see it advertised uh, on Facebook, and you can cut and paste and copy it and use okay. the link to YouTube. It'll be on YouTube basically. Okay, and I'm on um, LinkedIn too, so I, I know that's how Libby found me. So, um, okay. you know, whatever I, you know, whatever I can do from our end, you know, will will help. So we can all shine our lights. That, that's right. Okay. Well, um, then I guess we're through, and I appreciate y'all's time so much. And uh, you can watch for it to be aired. It'll be aired on uh, Thursday before before Easter. We and where, would, where do we look at? Where will we find it? Uh, we'll post it. We'll post it on all social media, and it'll have a link that okay. you can go to YouTube. You can people can find it on YouTube. Okay, okay. And we're gonna really advertise it because it's on YouTube because that's where people go. Okay. And they can put in keywords, you know, like faith has its reasons and things like that, and uh, and then that way we can we can uh, respark it and get it ready to go. So. Thank you so much. Okay, I appreciate y'all, and I love you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Bye bye. Okay. Shine, shine, shine your light. Shine, shine, shine your light. Shine, shine, shine your light. Shine, shine, shine. Miss Joe.